Cindy Herb, the joyful survivor. I help others overcome adversity and find joy in their lives. Many times when we have adversity, it manifests itself as procrastination. So how do you overcome procrastination? Today, I wanted to sit down with a good friend of mine, Lauren Midgley, who is known as a procrastination coach. Let's go to that interview to find out what she has to say on how you too can achieve success by overcoming your procrastination. If you're in the mode of trying to overcome adversity, if you're trying to become a joyful survivor, sometimes things in your life can manifest as procrastination. I want to thank you, Lauren, for being my guest today. I appreciate it so much. You're quite welcome. I'm glad to be here. It's great to have you on the show. So now my first question is, what exactly is procrastination? Good question. And everyone has different definitions, Cindy, but I like to keep it very, very simple. And the simple definition is, what are you delaying on or avoiding? And it could be a task. It could be a decision. It could be a discussion with someone. It could be a goal or a lot of times it could be a dream. Oh wow. And that's very it, that's very insightful because especially if we have things that go on in our lives, I know that we do hold off moving forward. So would you say that that's a true statement is about if especially if you're you have some adversity in your life that it could manifest as procrastination? Absolutely. And what happens is if it's something that you think of as negative or something you don't want to do, you don't like doing it, it is very easy to procrastinate. And generally you'll be working on and doing things or having discussions with people that you really like to do rather than the things that you really need to be doing. So what would be one of the first things that you would say to somebody to overcome? What's the first step that they can take? The first step really is to identify what are those things that you're procrastinating on. The good news is probably 99.95% of the population procrastinates. Everybody does it. So it's like you're not alone. However, for you, and it's all individual. So for you, what are you procrastinating on? And the step is, the first step is to identify what's your list. I call it a procrastination log and I suggest write down just what are those items that you have in your head that are really bugging you that you know you need to do and you just haven't done it. Make the list. It might be four items, it might be six items. The deal is get it out of your head and onto a piece of paper. Now, I agree with that so totally because I'm a firm believer of journaling and people, it, you know, what if some, what would you say to somebody if they told you, oh, well, I don't like writing. Do you have any tools or systems that they can use? I do. I have something that's called a procrastination log and what I recommend is don't write a lot. Just really capture a couple of words of what, in just that are keywords, you know what that procrastinated item is. Don't need to do a lot of sentences or etc. It's more just get it out of your head and onto a piece of paper. Generally when people will do that, they'll find it could be four items, six items, eight items that they have. And getting it out of their head sometimes will either trigger one of two things. It could be, do you really, really even need to do that item? And when you see it on paper, it's like, well, maybe, maybe not. Or the other part will, it will jump out as to of those eight items, which one really needs your attention now. And do you also find that once you start making the list, and this happened, and I just say this because it happens for me, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden you'll start, more ideas will start coming in because it's like we've been in a mode, we haven't done anything, and once you start getting the wheels turning, then more things appear. Absolutely. And so it's one of those things where you're like, okay, and you almost have to sit down, make yourself take a little bit of time and say, okay, I'm going to work on my procrastinated items. What are those things that are in my head? Get them on a piece of paper. Once you start, 
more ideas do come and you begin to think about those in a deeper way that you've not thought about them. Because usually they just live in your head right now. And when they live in your head, it produces guilt, overwhelm, frustration, and something somewhere along in your day, well, there'll be a trigger. It'll, and it will remind you of that item that's in your head and it'll make you feel bad. And why do you want to feel bad? You don't want to feel bad. That's true. Right. And the thing that I, that I wanted to focus on is that we do let things overwhelm us. And so sometimes when you make a list, do you suggest that people just go one item at a time and not try to tackle everything? Right. You prioritize. Is that, is that correct? Right. So what I suggest clients do is create that list, and I call it kind of column one. What's the list? And just a couple of words in each of those items. After that, take a look and ask yourself some questions as to do I need to start this or do I need to finish it? And a key thing is why, what feelings come up for you as to this particular item? How strong is it? Uh, sometimes there's items on the list that, yeah, they need to be done, but they're not, it's not something that has to be done immediately. And there are some things that generally will have a higher priority. The other thing to think about when you're procrastinating is what are you doing instead? So. Again, again, typically you'll find people that will organize their desk or clean the kitchen or do other, or you know, my, my activity of choice is I'll read. Uh, that's my escape. I'll read and I can avoid doing a lot of things and because I enjoy reading. So think about what tasks you do that you enjoy instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, that is so excellent because I, and you I'll probably have people write down the things that they're doing to avoid, they don't realize that that's what they're doing until they start listing all these activities and probably they're taking up a huge part of their lives. Yes. And do you find that people, when they procrastinate, they always say, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. Is that an excuse or is that reality? It's, it can be both. So let me come back to that though. So if, go back to this grid and then we'll talk about the time. If we look at the grid, so you've got this list kind of going down in column one, and you answer some questions, is do I need to start, do I need to finish? The other question that you really need to ask yourself is, what are the consequences if I don't do this item? And sometimes you really do need to think about it, and as you said earlier, when you think about it, more ideas come up. And then you look at the flip side. So the flip side is, what are the benefits if I get this done? So when you look at that kind of in, I call it the holistic approach, looking at the total picture of your procrastinated items, then you get a sense as to what really is jumping out at, on, from the page at me. Uh, another way to look at it would be the log at a glance. If you see it all laid out in a glance, I can guarantee you you'll find one or two things that really need your attention. So then you take a look at why am I not doing it? Is it time or is it fear? So sometimes it can actually be time of saying, okay, now that I've identified I need to do this, where in my schedule am I going to do it? So let's assume you have space in your schedule to do it, then logically you should do it. But here's the question. If you continually resist doing this item, there's something else going on. It's not about time. It's really about fear. There's something about that task that you are delaying and avoiding working on it. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. It might be the situation where you are waiting for some more information, you need to do some more research, you want it to be perfect, and you delay starting it because you're concerned about the outcome. I know I don't have enough time to work on this presentation and really make it perfect, so I'll wait till I have a block of time to do it, or I want to write my book, or I want to write my blog, or I want to order a report, or I want to do something, but I don't, I, I, I have a fear about what the outcome is going to be, and that will stop you. And so sometimes you really do have to look at what your fears are. 
Yes, that's a very good point. That's what we're all about is becoming joyful survivors mm -hmm. and using tools and people around us who can assist us in that, that process. Right. And my, the last thing I want to say, we're going to come back some other times and talk to Lauren because she has so much to say and so much wise information for us. But if we wanted to reach you, Lauren, where could we reach you? The best way to reach me would be at yourprocrastinationcoach.com. And you have some tools that people can find out about there and some workshops and seminars. Is that correct? Absolutely. So I invite you all to go to Lauren's website, check her out. And until next time, I want to thank you again, Lauren, for being with us today. Thank you for your information. It's great. Thank you, Cindy. And to all of my viewers, I want to wish you the best. Thank you again.